My understanding is some of them Chinos done heard what I said about India going into Russia, taking their states, and they were like, well, I'm, I'm actually concerned about that because if, if India takes their entire nuclear arsenal or, or what's left of it, and uh, I'm sitting there to the south and it's like, India's got all those nukes, I might not like that because sometimes <clears throat> I ain't got that great of a relationship with the Indians, but usually I actually tend to have a pretty decent relationship with them. All right, so the Chinos done heard that, and they're like, all right, well, maybe I actually do need to take some of these states, especially certain states. Um, yeah, theoretically, if that ever happened. All right, problem is, it's a big-ass world. There are lots of people out there. You got them Indonesies. You got who you got? You got them Burmese. Right? What do, you, what do you call them? Burmesians? All right, so you got them Burmesians, and they could always go in there. Wait, no. Wait, that would, they'd have to go into China. They'd have to join. The thing about them North Koreans is, uh, sometimes I think they get a little itchy for a battle, and uh, they wouldn't mind taking one of them states. The big thing is, though, uh, India is the country that really wants that water, and I feel like Chinos want it sometimes, too, but um, you never really know. All right, so down to this constitutional crisis we have reached, um, combined with the question of, uh, so Nigeria, they could always go in there and take it. The problem is Nigeria's on the other side of Africa. Nigeria is facing, like, the United States. It's kind of far away, but I always like to try to recruit them Nigerians to go fight war with me, because I feel like a lot of Nigerians, uh, they're kind of like, say, say you got the Muslims. They know the Christians, and they're like, you know, I like the Christians. I don't agree with them, but we actually get along pretty well. And you got all the Christians. And they know the Muslims. They're like, you know, I get along with the Muslims pretty well. I ain't, I ain't like as stuck in my ways as everyone thinks about it. Because th th think about them Nigerians. Like, they live in a place where uh, oppression happens on a daily basis. And they live in a place where bad things happen a lot. And so all I'm saying is when you live in a place where bad things happen a lot, you tend to be more open-minded than people realize, even if they have, you know, what is it? In the north, they got them Muslims, right? South, they got the Christians. That's down there where that oil is, but I guess they got oil all over the place. Um, all right, so them Nigerians, they want to go to war. They can. The problem is they're on the other side of Africa, but the great news is nowadays, you wake up, go to war real quick. Hey, you want to go to war? Uh, uh, give me three days. Wait, what? How do you do it? You take every plane you can find and you fly it into their cities and then you fly the planes back and go get more people. <laughs> Seriously, you drop off a lot of people, you just keep dropping them off. All right, so let me think here. Why did Vladimir Putin bring this upon himself? Is it because I've always kind of imagined him as a reek? <laughs> One time I told, I told Vladimir Putin, after Donald Trump went in there, basically sucked that man's cock, Walked out in the public, told him all how much he loved him. Told him how beautiful Vladimir Putin was after that man blew a bomb on American soil. So Donald Trump goes to suck some cock. Comes out, tells everyone how much he loves Vlad. I sit there and I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna let this happen. I'm gonna let that man know I think he's reek. I ain't gonna call him Vlad no more. He's gonna be reek, he's gonna be my bitch if he survives. Don't think he's gonna survive though. Personally, I ain't much for torture, but you're a sick fuck. 